Ah, feels so good to be on the road again. Feels so good. It really does. My ears are popping, my tunes are rocking. This makes me happy. You know, if I have a breakdown, I'll be laughing about it. Because no matter what, I have my bed with me. I have everything I'd ever need in life with me. Might not have my sanity, but in some ways I do. <laughs> for a week or two, for a week or two, I'm going to the mountains for a week or two. With Nika Moo, for a week or two. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, well. 15 miles on a road like this. And you know, I'm going 30 miles an hour. That's better than you most of these backcountry back roads. Ah. Oh, there's somebody camping there. Because most of these backcountry roads, you, at least for me in this one ton van, I can only go about 15 miles an hour. Uh, GPS says I have miles to go for my next turn. Oh, now it's getting bad. Okay, now we had to slow down to 10 miles an hour. That's a bummer. But that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It's okay. I'm going there for a week, so it's okay. And I might even have cell signal. I know I'll be hitting these towers up here with my radio. That's a nice tower. I just wish the road wasn't so bad. Got some rain. Look at that, got some rain. Yeah, I just wish the road really bad. It's okay. <laughs> That's okay, man. Um, I'm hoping that there's like going to be a lot of trees because I don't see trees, but then I got to go almost 10 miles. Wowzers. Hey everybody. I hope everybody's doing great. I am. There's only four campsites at this spot. I hate to go all the way down this road and find out all four are taken, but you know, if it is, big deal. Not gonna change anything. But looky here, I am truly in the land of make-believe. Satellite dishes, huge satellite dishes. Way in the middle of nowhere. No. Cattle guard crossing. <laughs> Said like this. That's huge. It's ginormous. They're all over out here. There's another one. And I got my zoom on, turned up all the way. It's about 12 times zoom. They're out there, ways. There's another one. See it? 
We're just taking our time, eight miles an hour, going down this road, because there's a campground at the end of it. Can you see the little building on the bottom on the right? <laughs> These things are huge. My zoom's up all the way. That's the best I can do, people. Oh, there's a whole row of them down the road here, down the field. Boy, there's a, those are huge because look how big that building is next to it. That building is about the size of my van. It's a small building. So that thing's like 60 to 80 feet to the very top point. I think they're listening for signals from outer space. <laughs> This is a very pleasurable drive going 15 miles an hour. It takes a lot of calmness and tranquility to be able to handle going this slow. Yeah, it's like a trailer home next to it. That baby's huge. There's a few of them out here. Ooh, the smells out here are pretty awesome. Oh, railroad crossing. Look at that. Wow, two tracks. Standing on the crossroads. Yeah, these are old tracks. Oh, they're not in use because there's two pieces of machinery on the tracks. Ooh, the air is so clean out here. This is where's the drive. There's another big dish way out there. Big. I've never seen a satellite dish that big before, and I have seen a lot of them. Ah, well, now I am curious. Will I be the only one way out here of the four campsites at Bear Trap Campground? Will anybody show up this weekend? I got everything I need. <laughs> So, it's going to be fun by myself or with others because I've become more social now. It took a little over two years for me to step out of my shell, my 54-year-old shell, to be free again. Freer than I was as a child. Because I don't care about anything anymore. I don't care. Nothing's going to change how I think, feel, or my level of happiness or sanity. Nothing. It took years to get here. It took years to become the man that I am. And I truly am happy. Insane or not, I am happy. I remember about a dozen years ago, I used to say, you know, people that are insane are happy. Look at them. They're always smiling. Nothing gets them down. Not that I ever wanted to get to this point in life. I don't feel insane all the time. <laughs> but look at this. We're getting closer to the mountains down this long road it's not that bumpy i could go easily go 50 miles an hour down here even 70 in my dodge let's try it make us freak it out all right i don't want to go crazy <laughs> I've been going eight or nine miles an hour for the last 20 miles. I don't want to go crazy. But uh, the road's smooth. It's not bad. Impressive. I love my Dodge. 
I love my dogs. I love the air out here. It's so clean and fresh and crisp. I'm really happy the road's nice and smooth. This is way cool. Three and a half miles till the next turn. tell you what, there is no better feeling than being this far away from society. And I still have cell signal at the moment. I still got three miles to go. The air is so, the temperature has dropped majorly in a good way. I am just so deeply in love, I cannot explain. It's just like it's just like when you're in love with a human being, yet most people don't treat you unconditionally. So whatever you feel is usually a falsehood of the way you want to feel. If you want that security or whatever, you create it for your own self-happiness until you realize something's not right. But this, this will not hurt me. I can love this all I want to, and it's not going to hurt me. If I break down, it doesn't mean that it's hurting me. It just means that my vehicle needed to have something taken care of. So it can go on more and more and more. I feel so free right now out here. And that's why I push record. And that's why I'm going to share this publicly with everybody and everybody forever and ever because I feel inside I feel so free there's rain up there there's rain happening the further I got away from the blacktop road the happier and freer I felt. Although, I have to be honest to say that first mile, I'm thinking, oh no, what the heck? 20 miles down a road like this? But then I remembered when I started out in Colorado, the best places were the places that were furthest away from the road. And that's where I found, that's where my soul was clearly cleansed. That's where I started to feel free. That's when my spirit started to let go and fly and be free. The best places to camp are those places that are furthest from the main road. And that's why in the last two years, three years, I have noticed People that have a backpack and a tent are happier than those in the vehicle with a big camper. That's why I notice people in vans are happier than those in big Class A rigs. Not always, but for the most part, 95% of the time. Or those on pedal bikes with a tent are happier than those on Harleys and motorbikes, and those people are pretty happy. Or the people who break down after they readjust, depending upon the changes they have to go through to readjust. The people that end up with a backpack on foot and learn how to eat what's free 
and fresh and grown. Those that get a book and learn what's safe to eat. Because just about everything out here is edible and very healthy for you. Those are the happier people. And I, it came upon me right away, but I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't grasp it right away. The trueness of it. I kept questioning, how come these people are so happy when they have nothing? And then I realized they have a lot. They have a lot that I didn't have. And it's a mental clarity of being free. And I get more and more and more of that every week, every month. And now it's become, every time I change to a different spot, it comes clearer that what they have is priceless. Okay, this is Cibola Forest. Or if I still have cell signal. Ugh. You know that feeling like when you're on a roller coaster and you go over the big hill and you're starting to drop down? I'm starting to feel that. It's a certain happiness. Okay, I just saw the sign. It said Bear Trap Campground, seven miles. I still have seven miles to go at 15 miles an hour. I've come across another vehicle. The last one I saw about five miles back was broken down on the side. Somebody took a door off it years ago. Hood was open. Looks like these might be broken down too. I guess it'd be hard to get a wrecker out here to pull you out. If you break down out here, you're staying here until a ranger might come by. Might, I doubt they ever do out here. That one got stripped. Look at all that's left of it. The engine's even gone. Somebody came and pulled the engine out. They left the tires on. Well, they like to take doors off out here. Took the tires off that and a the door. These springs look good. Got a little rain going through and that's cool. This is awesome. Ain't nobody gonna bother me out here. Heck no. The views out here are really cool. I got a feeling nobody's gonna go through their work and effort to get out here. And that's great. It's so impossible to keep driving. I have to stop and capture these beautiful views out here. It's so cool. Still got 4.3 miles to go. Look, I can see for miles. Miles and miles, but I cannot see civilization. Is this not awesome? It's so far away the camera has a problem focusing. And our elevation is pretty good too. We're up there, baby. We are up there. Still 
going about five miles an hour down this road. <laughs> and I'm loving every bit of it. You can see where the road washes out and goes down the edge. Like right here. Love my Dodge. I don't know if I would take a little van down here. Certainly not a camper or a truck with a camper in the bed. I don't even think I would take a car out here. My vehicle is made perfectly for this kind of land. At this point, I could consider an upgrade of better springs. And it'd be cool to have a four-wheel drive base. But I don't need the power or the traction. I'm fine as it is. I'm just saying it would be outfitted better, that's all. But if you had a camper in the bed of a four-wheel drive truck, um, it would make it too top heavy on these roads where you're not driving flat and level and you could tip over and go down the edge. And I wouldn't want to do that. There's been times where I've wanted to stop and, uh, well, you can't turn around, but just stop because nobody's going to come down this road. You can park anywhere. But why not just go the last couple miles, get to the campground? The road goes up there. And that's what some people do right there. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Oh, the view. Let me get a clearing. Maybe if I put the window down. It's not going to show you. It's way out there you can see more mountains but the camera doesn't know how to focus on it. There's some of it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. As far as you can see. Alright. We still got four miles to go. You definitely do not need both hands on the steering wheel. But you do want to keep your eyes on the road. You don't want to go off an edge or a cliff. You don't want to be messing around with cameras or phones or uh, cigarettes. <laughs> Just want to take her easy. We've been averaging about two and a half miles an hour now. It's getting rougher. And that's okay. Yeah, ain't nobody in their sane mind would ever come out here. <laughs> I'm gonna have total freedom and privacy. That's cool, I needed it. I took my hat off. We are right next to the rocks. Right next to the edge. It's fucking gorgeous. I have to say, this has been the summer of all summers. When I started out in Colorado, that was cool. It was awesome. But this summer, I've done so much and seen so much and been to some of the coolest places ever. I mean, even in this month, in the month of July, I got to go to the Gila Cliff Dwellings, which was nothing that I was wanting to do, but since I was there, I did it, and it was pretty cool. Oh, there's somebody behind me. Wow, imagine that. Wow. I wasn't expecting that at all. He must have been flying. And then I got to go to uh, that huge strip mine. got to see some really cool outback places
and now here. We got somebody behind us. Check that out. 